Hi, I'm Angela Fair, and today I want to show you how to create some distant trees using a bloom in watercolor. And blooms, as we know, uh, they're the kind of thing that happen when you least expect them and do terrible things, but they can also be a good friend for you when you're trying to create texture in, in watercolor. So we're going to do some blooms uh, here on our paper and talk about how to make them look like far off trees in a landscape scene. And then as we do that, we'll also talk about why blooms are created, how to, how to control and manage them, and also how to prevent them and what to expect uh, when, you're, when you're working with a lot of water and uh, in, in watercolor. So let's just go straight down to our work surface here and create some blooms that are going to be great trees in our landscape. So we're just going to start here with uh, paint by painting our sky. And as you can see, I haven't, uh, actually I need to clean a spot in my palette first. But as you can see by my paper, I haven't taped my paper down or stretched it in any way. And uh, really with modern watercolor paper, you don't really need to stretch it, especially if you're using, or at least when you're using water, uh, artist quality watercolor paper. Student grade, uh, you might want to tape it down or, or do something to prevent it from buckling because it will buckle a lot more. But I find that I like to, I like to work quickly. I like to just get in and paint and I'll paint a fluid wash or a, a loose painting for about five minutes and then I'll set it aside. And so I don't really want to have to remove it from my painting board at that time and uh, and set up something new and spend all that time so what I like to do is just paint on the loose paper set it aside and then I can quickly go into painting something else let this piece dry and then go back to it and uh, when you're working that quickly it's just easier to not tape things down if it does start to buckle we'll talk about some ways to to prevent that or I might just hold it down with my hand or clip it with some uh, bulldog clips or uh, one watercolor artist I admire actually puts uh, rocks on the dry parts of her paper uh, to weight it down in those places while she works very fluidly in other areas. So there's different things you can do. So what I want to do here is just paint a nice blue sky. And I'm going to make it quite bright blue because I want it to, I want to do some interesting effects when I start making blooms. And so I think a nice mix of, this is Verdider Blue and Ultramarine should do the trick. Both colors are a little bit sedimentary. They are, will granulate and uh, separate a little bit on the paper. They're not staining colors or not highly staining. So they will also move when I, uh, you can lift and blot them, or you can add water and let them move. There's a little bit of lint there on my paper. I'll probably just pick that off after it dries, or while everything is nice and wet. So there we go. You can see I'm using a large round brush. I like this uh, Princeton number 16 round because it holds a lot of fluid pigment while also being uh, holding a nice point for getting detail. So I've tried to keep my water fairly even here and it's kind of a shiny moisture. We don't have a puddle forming if I tilt. It's just kind of very, uh, very fluidly juicy, I guess would be a good word for it. Now here, if I wanted to make clouds, I could blot with my paper towel and it will start to lift the color as you can see. And actually I'm going to do a little bit more of that because that looks not too bad. And I like to connect my clouds in some way, maybe with a smaller cloud or just give them a pleasing shape on the paper. And, uh, there's, a f and there's also a few lines and streaks in here, which I would probably fuss with more as the color was damp if I wanted to be really particular. Now, I'm going to go about introducing some blooms into my into my painting and I could actually do that with my clouds as well if I wanted but I want to create those distant trees so I'm going to dot in very uh, fairly large amount of water um, my brush is quite wet if I shake it it'll drip and when I introduce extra water into my wash I'm creating an imbalance of water and on my paper and uh, what happens is when you add that extra water in that water needs to go somewhere. It wants to go somewhere. On dry paper, the water will mostly stay put, but on damp paper, 
the dampness does form a passage for that water to move. And so I start seeing an edge being created where that pigment gets pushed by the water. And that's just that there, there isn't a balance of pigment here. It's not the same amount of water I was working with earlier. It's more as this starts to dry and lose its shine and fluid moisture. So that's the basics of why blooms are created. And I can just, and you can also introduce new color to create blooms as well. So if I wanted to introduce a green at this point, and I've got a really nice undersea green mixed with violet here. So if I wanted to start introducing that in here as well, and I might want to make it even a little bit juicier than that, it's going to push against the dampness on the paper as well and create a bloom. So right now I can you can see the texture that's happening with that moisture that I've introduced and then once I start to get that edge I'm going to start making some decisions about what colors to start putting into my painting. And uh, if I were just to be painting clouds I might not even put colors in at all. I would just let the water push the pigment to create my cloud shapes. But right now I'm dotting in some green gold and you can see how interesting because with when I went in with that clear water not only did I add did I create those edges but I also created more fluidity so as I dot in these new colors they're gonna blend in a really pleasing way but just in these this area that's now the wettest area of the paper and I'm enjoying seeing the colors and the effects that are being created that's the basics of creating blooms with your pigment. And uh, like I said, you could do it with just water or just pigment. Uh, as my paper starts to, it's still damp right now, I can touch it with the back of my finger and feel that dampness. And as long as it's damp, it's a little bit of a dangerous time to work because that's when we start getting those edges of blooms happening. But if you want a bloom, this is the time to do it when your painting starts to lose its shine and but, but it's still fairly damp and so and I could go even further and it would be actually really fun to let this have a chance to dry my tree area here and as it starts to lose its shine I could create a new layer of trees just by starting to dot in some more water and creating that imbalance that gives us those blooms again now this is just the beginning of a landscape scene and what I would have loved to do and in fact I might do it even now is leave a little space right here because I think I might want to paint a little building or something that I want to have lighter than the rest of the scene so I can just blot with a paper towel and then you know if I then once that's completely dry I will have a space to put in maybe a house or a barn or something like that and then once it's solidly dry, then I can go in and build up my cloud shapes that I created here because they're not really very, very interesting. I might want to create some stronger contrasts there. And then, of course, paint my grass down below as well. But I, I just wanted you to take a look at one way to create loose and fluid trees in a background of a scene. And uh, because I worked with both a lighter green and a darker green, we're getting real um, interplay of shadow and light here in our, in our trees. And that gives us the impression of a sunny day. If the colors are fairly even and there's not a lot of strong contrasts, then you'll feel more like it's uh, overcast. And uh, so I might want to make my clouds stand out even more strongly to uh, go along with that theme of, of strong sunlight and then continue that throughout the rest of the scene down below here as well. So give it a try. Think about when you're painting and your painting starts to lose its shine. Remember that when you introduce that imbalance of moisture, whether your brush is saturated with water uh, or you drop a bit, you just happen to drip on your paper while it's drying, you will create those blooms with that imbalance. That's where they come from, so do watch for that as your painting starts to lose its shine and uh, get that damp but not wet feeling, that's when you kind of want to stop painting if you're wanting to avoid the whole issue of creating blooms or cauliflowers. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. 
remember that when you understand why things happen the way they happen in watercolor it just makes it easier for you to create or to control watercolor just a little bit more so understanding why we get blooms and how they're made will really help you to be able to use them intentionally in your paintings whether you're doing trees or clouds or or any kind of texture i want to try this uh, technique with fuzzy pussy willows that bloom in the spring and uh, just you know, have fun with just having some watercolor adventures, be expressive and experimental, try out the techniques, do the break the rules and do what you're not supposed to do and see how that works for you. You just never know when you'll have a breakthrough and uh, just surge ahead in your watercolor education. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to check out the rest of my YouTube channel, subscribe. My uh, username is Angel Fair, and I have well over 60 watercolor tutorial videos. So there's lots of content there for you to follow and learn from. And if you like my YouTube channel, then I encourage you also to check out my learning site, which is learn.angelafair.com. I have a free course on there, as well as a whole bunch of structured and in-depth watercolor tutorials that you can learn from, including my new tree clinic, which is launching this week and is only available for a limited time. As well, in my online classes, you can post your own student work and uh, receive guidance and critique by, by your fellow students as well as from me. And I'm very, uh, I really try to encourage and give uh, good guidance and instruction in the student gallery so the learning just goes on and on. And with all my online classes, is when you sign up and enroll, you get lifetime access so you can watch the videos over and over again. And uh, so yeah, check it all out. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day. Just love your painting adventure and the more you paint, the better you'll be.